One thing I have been noticing in our world recently is a tendency on the part of a lot of people to see the negative of everything, to be pessimistic and only see all the bad things that have been done and miss the good things. I'm not saying to be Pollyannic, to put on rose-colored spectacles and just pretend everything is wonderful. No, of course not. When there are evils, when there are wrong things, sure, we have to acknowledge them, address them, and learn from them and improve from them. But Sometimes we just get ourselves down because all we want to do is look at the negative. Yeah, well, that person may have done something good here, but look what he did over there, and so that's worse than the other. And we do that in many places and many peoples and cultures and societies. And one person in particular that the world has been doing to more recently is Christopher Columbus. And today, of course, with our Columbus Day Parade Committee here, tomorrow our parade, I thought it would be helpful to look a little bit at what's happening with the name of Columbus, why all of a sudden in recent years, municipalities all over the place, even one of our local Catholic colleges is not calling it Columbus Day, but fall break this year, and people who are looking to take down statues of Columbus and paint him as a villain, villain rather than somebody who was always upheld and a day that we celebrated that trying to make us feel guilty for celebrating Columbus Day as if there's something wrong with it. And first of all, people in many places are replacing Columbus Day with Indigenous Peoples Day. Well, I'm all for celebrating Indigenous Peoples. And you know what? We have a day for that. August 9th, in fact, even greater than the United States, the United Nations established August 9th as World Indigenous Peoples Day for a day to celebrate the Indigenous Peoples of any place on the face of the earth. So let's build that up. Let's have a parade on August 9th for Indigenous Peoples. We don't have to take Columbus Day away and instead only celebrate Indigenous Peoples. And what's with all the controversy about people trying to take down statues and all of a sudden we're supposed to be embarrassed by um, Christopher Columbus? Well, let's look at it this way. First of all, I've never been to Menlo Park, New Jersey. But, of course, Menlo Park, as you may know, is the place where Thomas Edison lived, and he was their, you know, their favorite, you know, favorite son. And I would expect to see a statue to uh, Thomas Edison in Menlo Park. And, you know, you would expect it because Thomas Edison, you know, with his factory and all the things that he did there, all the inventions that he's credited for, well, he made a difference in our world. I don't know anything about the personal life of Thomas Edison. I don't know if he was a moral man or not. He could have been a saint or he could have been an absolute villain uh, inflicted with every vice imaginable. But that's not what we're celebrating. In honoring Thomas Edison, we're talking about the contributions that the man made. And yeah, I know there's always, everybody has critics, and I, of course, know that Thomas Edison has his critics. There are some people who claim that he stole inventions from other people and patented them, and other people claim that he just had all these hundreds of people working for him, and when they credited, he didn't give them the credit for it, he just took it for himself. Some people say that he was hard on his workers and employees and everything. I don't know if any of that is true. But the point is, because of what Thomas Edison did, our lives are the better. And so we overlook the weaknesses and we celebrate what's right about what happened. And the same thing needs to happen with everybody. Not only is it Thomas, uh, uh, Christopher Columbus, but there was even a church down in Virginia which was taking the plaque out of the pew where George Washington used to sit when he worshipped because they were afraid that somebody who might remember that George Washington owned slaves might be offended by that. And if we live in fear of offending everybody, well, by the fear of offending one person, we end up offending so many others. And one thing that the world seems to be forgetting is that by trying to denigrate Christopher Columbus, they're offending us, somebody that we have held up, especially Italian-Americans, that he has been somebody that we've had so much pride in. And so we have to be very careful about casting judgment and throwing stones at people. And some of these things around Christopher Columbus, you get some people who are trying to tear him down and they're trying to point out every bad thing he did. And like any human being, Christopher Columbus was not perfect. There's no question about that. Yeah, he did wrong things. All of us do. Who is perfect? Who can sit and say that we can sit in judgment of someone else? And then, of course, there's other people who, in defending him, will perhaps go too far to the other extreme to make his virtues look greater than they were. And if we start doing that, fighting over whether or not we should keep a statue of Christopher Columbus or celebrate Columbus Day as to whether or not was he a saint or was he a demon, 
Well, then we'll find ourselves sitting as judge and jury over Christopher Columbus and ultimately deciding that he should or should not become uh, or have a, a celebration or celebrate Columbus Day simply because we do or don't like the person that he was. And when that happens, we've sat in judgment over him. And the Lord tells us, do not judge, and you will not be judged. It is not our place to sit in judgment of somebody else, especially somebody who lived 500 years ago. It's so easy for us to sit in the 21st century and look back at the 15th century and say, oh, what a horrible thing Christopher Columbus and so many other people did. One, for example, that they hold up is that Christopher Columbus took natives, and some natives, and sent them back to Spain as slaves. And it's true. He did that. And I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying that was a good thing to do, that he was right to do that. But we do have to put it in context and realize slavery was not part of the entire world back then. Everybody did it. All the great powers enslaved people, and even the Native Americans would prey upon local tribes and they would enslave other people. And in some situations, such as in Central America, the Aztecs would not only, when they would have a war on a local tribe, they would not only enslave them, but they would take them and offer them up as human sacrifice to their gods, cutting out their hearts and offering them as sacrifice to their gods. So while it's not to make light of it, we do have to realize that It went on in the whole world back then. And to take Christopher Columbus and single him out and say he alone is guilty as if we give a pass for all the rest of the world, well, is disingenuous on our part and shameful. And people have a right to their good name even in death. But secondly, I think it's important to remember that nobody has called Columbus Day the Feast of St. Christopher Columbus. We are not canonizing Christopher Columbus. And it really, Columbus Day is not so much about the man, Christopher Columbus, as who he was, but what he accomplished. And sometimes even in looking at the things that happened, we forget the good that was there. Yeah, all of the ancient world, this was the age of exploration. This was the age where people were conquering lands all over the place. And yet... While people look at the harshness of Columbus and some of the people on his uh, entourage that were with him, they forget conveniently, I think sometimes, people such as Bartolomeo de las Casas, who came along, who was part of Columbus's crew, who lamented the poor treatment of the natives by some of the Spanish, and who repeatedly complained to Ferdinand and Isabella about the, the, their treatment, demanding that they be treated with dignity. Even here in in further years, or later years, subsequent years, in California, the missions, when the Franciscans came in and started the missions, sometimes people unfortunately take the crimes of one person and assume everybody is guilty of them. For example, what they did two years ago when Father Junipero Serra was canonized a saint, and people were calling him a murderer and a racist and a terrorist and all those things, when in reality, Father Junipero Serra was the greatest defender of the natives. In fact, whenever the Spanish government or anybody was uh, abusing the natives, he immediately went to the bishop, went to the governor, and fought for them. He was the champion of their rights. And yet some people, without knowing any of that, just because of their own agenda, whatever it may be, cast mud upon him and accused us of raising a terrorist to being a saint. And of course, that is sinful and hypocritical on the part of anybody to do that. How dare we sit in judgment of somebody we've never met based only on a few things we've read or heard here or there in a newspaper or on the news? And Christopher Columbus, of course, I even look at it and see there's almost a little bit of divine working going on here that God can write straight with crooked lines. It's almost a comedy because Christopher Columbus didn't set out to discover a new land. He was looking simply as a merchant to try and to find a faster route to the Orient. And he knew, of course, figured out that you could get to the east by sailing west. And his math was off, and he thought that the journey to the east was a lot shorter than, in fact, it was. And throughout his life, he died not knowing he'd actually discovered a new world. He still was convinced he'd reached a part of the Indies that people had just never met before. And it wasn't so much... Columbus himself, but what happened because of him? Some people even criticize and complain that, well, you know, Columbus wasn't the first European to step foot in the New World. Yeah, we know in the year 1000, Leif Erikson was in Newfoundland. Yeah, we know that. And maybe some of the stories of other people will prove to be true. But what happened with Columbus was that after him, now it was known to the world. The old world and the new became introduced to each other. And now people from the old world were able to come to the new world and eventually create the society 
society that you and I have now, this great country that we celebrate so much, this country that has become a beacon for people worldwide, people looking to come here to experience the freedom that you and I as Americans have and many other countries in the new world have, that so many people in the world long to be here and celebrate. Were there mistakes made along the way? Of course. Were there sins? Certainly. Not everything was just, but not everything was just among many of the Native Americans that were here, too. While many of them were peaceful, others of them were warlike among themselves. And all you have to do is Google some of the activity and see the very horrible things that even some of the natives did. So rather than sitting in judgment of other people, as unfortunately has been happening recently, people who try to tell us that we should not be celebrating Columbus Day because there's nothing great about it. Well, anybody who's living here in this country and is enjoying what we have ultimately has Christopher Columbus to thank for that. Because of his uh, journey and him stumbling upon this new world, people after him were able to come and create the society that we take for granted sometimes, but that we treasure so much. And millions of people worldwide are trying to come here and experience what we have. And if we're to sit in judgment and say that, well, all of that was wrong, well, then what we're doing basically is casting judgment, a full indictment upon the United States of America, upon our entire culture, and not just the United States of America. We're passing judgment on Canada and Mexico and all the countries in the Caribbean and Central America and Brazil and Argentina and every country in South America. Basically, we're saying we should never have come here, that we should have just left the natives alone and it was a mistake for us to be here. And anybody who says that, well, if they have integrity to do that, to say that way, then they have to realize that if they hold that opinion, then they, by living here in this country, are complicit in the alleged crimes of Christopher Columbus and everyone who came after them. And the only thing in good conscience that they should rightly do is give their land and everything they own to a Native American and move back to Europe or whatever other part of the world that their ancestors came from and say, I'm sorry we ever did this and move back. But you notice they don't do that. They very much love to continue living in the United States. And if we're going to sit here and enjoy the wonders of this culture and continue to pass judgment on the people who brought it here, well, that's hypocritical. And I have no respect for somebody who would do such a thing. If you're going to feel that way, then give your land to a Native American and move back to Europe or Asia or wherever your ancestors came from. And ultimately, what was the most important thing that Christopher Columbus and the people subsequently brought here to the New World? Christianity. They brought the faith. Once they realized there were new peoples here, remembering the call of Christ to make disciples of all the nations, they came out to bring people to Christ. And yes, some of them did it in the wrong way. There were some who were cruel about it, but certainly not everyone. Many that we know were very peaceful, and not all of the people who embraced the faith were, as some critics would say, converted at gunpoint. Many of them embraced it willingly and freely. Case in point, the Huron Indians in in southern Canada, when the French Jesuits came over and worked with them, Isaac Jogues and his companions, the North American martyrs. When they came over, they were welcomed by the Hurons, and they willingly embraced the faith. They had a good trading relationship. They respected each other, and everything was fine. Unfortunately for the the Hurons and the French Jesuits, they had, the Hurons had an arch enemy, the Iroquois of upstate New York, who in one of their wars upon the Hurons arrested also or took back as slaves the, uh, the Jesuits with them and tortured them horribly to death. So on any side, if we're going to look at any situation of any culture or anything, we're going to find high points and we're going to find low points. If we start denying celebrations and taking down statues of everybody who's committed a sin, well, we're going to have nobody left. The only two people we could possibly have a statue to then would be Jesus and Mary. And those are the last two people that secular society wants us erecting statues to. So we'd have absolutely nobody left. And all we would do is sit down in our misery and in the mud and just say we're all a bunch of miserable sinners and we continue only to wallow in that and we'd have nobody to inspire us. Our heroes are not perfect people. Our heroes are people who even in spite of their weakness did great things or allowed God to work great things through them. And ultimately, the Spanish who came over here and then the French and the others who did brought the Catholic faith here. And at Columbus Day, I always feel a special pride of being a Catholic even more so than being an Italian-American, because even though we know Columbus sailed for the Spanish, he was Italian. We who are Italian-American take great pride in that. Nevertheless, we are Catholic, and we brought the faith here. 
And I would hope to, that there wouldn't be anybody who is now a Christian, who maybe was originally a Native American, would prefer to say, well, I'd rather leave Christianity behind and go back to killing people and capturing people and offering up human sacrifice to the gods, as was done in many places uh, in the New World before Christianity came here. Bringing Christianity here to the United States or to what's now the United States and the New World, I'm not going to apologize for that. I'm going to be proud of that and I'm going to celebrate that because that's what Christ called us to do. So Columbus Day, yes, celebrate it. Celebrate it with great pride because we provided ultimately here on this land a country that has given inspiration and uh, an opportunity and freedom for so many people worldwide who come and see the Statue of Liberty and it means so much for them. What Columbus Day is is also what the Statue of Liberty is. And if we're going to take down statues of Columbus, then I think we should also take down the Statue of Liberty. No, this is a day we celebrate our pride as a nation, our pride of our freedom and everything that is right about our country. Is our country perfect? No, certainly not. There's a lot of things that are wrong about our country. But what's wrong with our country pales in comparison to what is right. So yes, celebrate Columbus Day. Celebrate Columbus's exploration. Celebrate everything we are as an American people of the entire new world. May God save Columbus Day. God bless America. And may we always remember to lift high the cross and bring Christ to the ends of the, of the world as the people who came to this great land did. May Jesus Christ be praised now and forever.